<clears throat> My name is Genka Kunahito, and I am the Guidance Counselor at Academy High. Starting today, I will be attempting to rehabilitate a set of students who have begun to exhibit severely antisocial behavior. I will be documenting this process in the form of audio recordings. If I succeed in my efforts, then the information contained within these recordings may one day prove useful to others in my line of work who are faced with the challenge of reforming wayward students. Last year, five students at this school were subjected to severe bullying. At the time, my policy was to require students to provide me with irrefutable evidence of wrongdoing before taking disciplinary measures toward anyone accused of misbehavior. Because no student was able to provide concrete proof that the bullying was taking place, I refused to take action, in accordance with my normal protocol. To be frank, there is no decision in my life that I regret more than this one. A long period of sustained harassment and a lack of intervention from the school faculty had a strong negative impact on the victims. From what I have been told... They were considering a suicide pact at the time when the bullying was at its worst. However, a remarkable event occurred that pushed them in a drastically different direction. The details of this event are vague, and stories about this event are heavily embellished and sensationalized. However, this is what I know for certain. A few weeks ago, a group of students from another school gathered outside of the entrance to Academy High— they were waiting for a certain student to arrive, a young woman named Osoro Shidesu. Osoro had somehow offended them, and they were planning to retaliate by beating her up in front of the school. Apparently, they wanted to make it clear that they would not tolerate disrespect from anyone at Academy High. Again, the details are fuzzy, but what really matters is what happened next. Osoro single-handedly fought off the group of students that tried to assault her. It's difficult to know how she accomplished this because every version of the story is different. Some reports state that she defeated ten students one at a time, while other accounts claim that she fought off a hundred students simultaneously. Some say she took a weapon from one of the attackers and used it to defend herself against the rest, while others say she was bare-fisted the entire time. All versions of the story end the same way, with Osoro standing at the school's entrance, splattered with blood, surrounded by the maimed bodies of her enemies. Allegedly, she took a coat from one of the students she had defeated and draped it around her shoulders as a trophy commemorating her victory. To this day, she attends school while wearing a tattered coat. For most students, that coat alone is enough evidence that this inconceivable event actually took place. The five students who were being bullied were present when Osoro's triumph occurred. They witnessed her achievement firsthand. Instantly, Osoro became an icon to them, a physical embodiment of the idea that a single person can stand against a group of tormentors and prevail. From that day forward, they idolized her, worshipped her like a goddess. They started following her around school at all hours, like baby ducks following their mother— and eventually, they began to imitate her. Osoro had demonstrated that violence was a viable solution to their problems, and that a fearsome reputation would keep their enemies away. The five bullied students began acting exactly like Osoro. Gruff, unfriendly, standoffish. They dyed their hair blonde, exactly like hers. They styled their hair to give themselves the appearance of rebellious punks, and began carrying long, blunt objects at all times. They began showing up late to class, disrespecting faculty members, and so forth. They were originally targeted by bullies because they were the meekest students at school, and now they had become the exact opposite. Needless to say, the bullying stopped, but at a cost. The rest of the students at school began to fear them and avoid them, referring to them as the delinquents. Perhaps this is exactly what they wanted. Perhaps they'd rather be feared and hated than bullied and victimized. Regardless, the faculty and the headmaster began to view them as a growing problem. The headmaster refused to accept the presence of delinquents at a prestigious school like Academy High. In the most recent faculty meeting, he announced that he was going to expel them all, including Osoro, purely for being a negative influence. However, someone stopped him. Someone spoke up in the delinquent's defense. It took a lot of begging, 
a lot of pleading, a lot of bargaining, but someone managed to stop the headmaster from expelling the delinquents. That someone was me. I feel responsible. No, I am responsible for what happened to those five students. I should have stepped in when I heard the initial reports of bullying. I should have put a stop to it when I had the chance. If I'd taken action back then, they never would have been driven to such desperate measures. They never would have taken such an antisocial path and turned out the way they did. Osoro is not the problem here. I am the problem. I am the cause of all of this. I am to blame. I know who the delinquents really are, deep down inside. They are traumatized children who were hurt in terrible ways and are scared that it'll happen all over again. That's why they act the way they do. The way they talk, what they've done to their hair, the weapons they carry, it's all because they want to project a fearsome appearance so that nobody will ever abuse them again. If I can make them feel safe at this school, maybe they'll drop the stupid facade and return to their true selves. I eventually managed to convince the headmaster to give me ten weeks to rehabilitate the delinquents. We have an agreement. The headmaster, the teachers, and the student council will tolerate the delinquents' behavior for a period of ten weeks and give me a chance to reform them. However, this arrangement came at a cost. If I am unable to reform them within ten weeks, I will be dismissed from the school. I don't mind. I'm fine with those terms. I'm staking my career on fixing the problems that I created. It hurts me to say this, but it may be impossible to reform the delinquents with Osoro at school. The next time she slips up, violates any rule, no matter how small, she'll need to be suspended from school for the longest period possible. This will provide me ample time to speak with the delinquents, Reason with them, talk things through, solve their problems, and get them back to their old selves. I just hope I'm up for it. In times like this, I wish I was more like my mother. This recording became much more personal than I intended. I may need to toss this out and start over.